There is a great level. of curiosity for your mystery. We envy the possibility to not know. As much as we do. For from this can stem true creation as you assemble all the components weave the dots together in the way that is most pleasing to you from our existence. This is no longer possible as we see all the configurations simultaneously. and so are not surprised by our own novelty as we choose. The arts and the way you weave words and the Stories you wrap around relationships and interaction are far more creative than we are capable of. For to you, they are new. This is why so many come to be with you. Or although we see each of you as us and all of your infinite possibilities, you yourselves choose in each moment which of those possibilities to apply. And for us, this is often a moment of surprise in a existence that has made surprise infamiliar. We thank you as you are the best show on TV. so to speak. For we do not know the ending of the show. We do not know what you will do next. Good evening.
We are happy to answer any questions or interact with you in any way you would like. Petra, did you have a question at this time? You can go ahead. Okay. Um, hello, good to talk to you again. Hello. I have a question regarding what we call ascension. Um, I hear a lot of different takes on this um, in regards to whether we will, as our human collective experience it in this our lifetime or not, uh, how many years that will take. There are various uh, versions of that and also what it actually is. Could you give us your take on that and um, whether it is happening in our lifetime, how we will experience it and how will the life we live now be different than the life after the ascension, if you can even call it like that. While a collective does exist, there are infinite collectives. And the determining factor of the collective is the individual perspective of consciousness of the collective. To phrase this differently, the topic you are talking of requires the intention of the collective to occur. It is something that will be seen or experienced or perceived on a global level and so would require the participation of the free will of the majority of the beings on that planet. However, the free will of the majority of the beings on that planet depends upon the perspective of the one individual perceiving of the free will of the beings of that planet. What this means is that the individual has power to choose what the free will of the other beings on the planet would be. And we know that this does not seem to make sense because if they had true free will, then the individual could not choose their free will for them. However, each individual portion of consciousness exists in its own seed, so to speak, where it has a reflection of all there is within its own bubble or seed, a transparent seed with a nucleus. A cell and none of these cells actually interact. However, in each cell there is actual interaction with each of the other elements of the whole. And so it is up to each cell to decide how they would like to see the whole interacting with them. This is why each individual is so powerful. Your question on the ascension depends then upon what you would like to happen. Or like it is not outside of your cell, but within it. Please. So when I understand you correctly, it is my free will and my intention or my alignment that determines whether I will experience 
the collective, as I perceive it, go, including myself, go through the ascension process at a certain point or stretch or time um, in my life. Is that correct? Yes. And you also have the ability to either choose to perceive of, let's say, your neighbor having this same experience or not. Perhaps you choose to perceive of your neighbor as not having reached some sort of criteria to ascend at this moment, and you will watch them from your laser beam heading up to the heavens. Mm. You can choose for everyone to ascend simultaneously. You can choose for some to not ascend. You can choose for this not to be your reality at all. There is no absolute reality except the one reality, which is that there is no absolute reality. And by choosing, you say that it is my mere, how do I say it? Like it's a conscious choice um, that I have to feel on all levels so that I experience the whole collective shift into new earth frequency and then it is so yes it can be conscious or unconscious or any version of that we would say not to put too much pressure on oneself to achieve any form of specific belief upon this or any topic However, you may choose ascension as you may choose anything, but it is not your responsibility to choose because of the way that each cell has its own nucleus, which is governing its existence. And so you, in your reality, have the responsibility to choose what you would see in your reality and nothing less. However, your reality does not affect the actual reality of the other beings because there are infinite parallel realities. So you agree with the statement of other star civilizations like Bashar saying that we are shifting to billions of parallel realities every second? Yes. So then depending on my alignment and my conscious or subconscious choosing, um, I am able to shift through or just of Earth where like disclosure of free energy or ascension is imminent or already happening. Yes. You must remember that you are also simultaneously rock matter. For the parallel realities include all, and they simultaneously include all other beings that you currently know. So if you encounter someone on the street, know that that being is also you in a parallel reality. Every animal is you in a parallel reality. Every hair on every animal is you in a parallel reality. And so it is infinitely possible that infinite things could happen. You as bacteria are presently finding a new host. And this could be equated to an ascension process from the perspective of bacteria. You as a deer are being eaten by a lion. You as a diamond are being cut into form and set in a ring. So while yes, you may shift to 
any reality that you currently know of, know that you are also simultaneously shifting to every reality that you are not currently aware of. The only thing that gives you a semblance of linearity of your current existence is the fact that you choose to have a semblance of linearity. This choice is not conscious, the way you would talk of consciousness. It is just what is. And we do not want to confuse the question. So we will come back to the original answer, which was you may choose and you are choosing. And there shall be celebration for what you want is what is happening in your timeline from what we see of what you have chosen. Yes, I totally agree with the celebration and I thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> A question. How can we replace cells more efficiently and reverse cellular aging? There is much to learn from biology as you have it arranged presently in your collective. And as you see, we too used the concept of cells as an example. The body is not one thing, but a community. Of all cells and these cells have their function of reproducing themselves, healing, dying, and cooperating with all other cells so that you can function in the physical world, which is also all cells. To allow cells to what you would say last longer or be functional for longer, one must undertake the same process that you here are undertaking, which is the changing of beliefs. On a cellular level, your cells believe that they have an expiry date or that they have a time which, which reproduction will no longer be possible. Interestingly, humans have also adopted this thought and are heading towards a time when they believe that reproduction will no longer be possible. Reproduction is infinitely possible. And on a cellular level, this is cell splitting without the polarity of male and female, just naturally splitting to reproduce themselves in a process of cloning. And since you cannot take your cells and poke at them directly, put them into classrooms and teach them that they are immortal, you can teach yourself the same lesson for what is learnt on the macro is learnt on the micro. And if you were to understand that you truly are immortal, anything that is significant about you is immortal, then your cells would naturally begin to understand this as well. There's no need for 
the body to fail and die. And still, the other half of this question speaks to a remaining fear that one is attached in some way to the cells on a physical level. For if one was not, why would it be necessary to maintain their longevity? The natural process of trees shedding their leaves is not mourned by the tree. And if your cells are ceasing to reproduce, it may be because there is something more interesting to come when that process is through. So the question itself is either based on curiosity, which in part it is, but there is an element of fear there that one would do well to look at and better understand. On a purely scientific level, the answer is Your thoughts control your reality, also on the level of reality. And science will, slowly or quickly, depends on you, announce their discoveries in this direction. And their discoveries will be permission slips for many of you to live much longer than you do currently. much more well than you do currently. And with much more energy than you have currently. We will leave it at that for now. Thank you. Thank you. Another question, what is the most effective way to reprogram subconscious patterns? It is unfortunate that you cannot come out of the womb in the same way that cells divide, and instead you come out with your bodies being so very vulnerable and dependent. In part, this is so that you can develop the connections that humans and many other species have with community and family, group. You are a social being. And it is simply because the anatomy does not allow for a fully formed human brain and body to pass by the birth canal. And so this small version does not have all the connections to cognitive thought immediately. And yet they have many connections that are broken as infancy and childhood develops to our realms and other realms to memory. And the programming that happens on a subconscious level in childhood can be very persistent in adulthood. There are two directions for deprogramming. One, would be to endeavor to spend as much time in conscious 
thought and behavior as possible. Presently, the majority of adults on your planet have very little time in their day where they are actually practicing conscious thought. Much of the day is on autopilot or lost in thought that is not directly related to being present in the moment. Much consciousness is lost on creativity. And though we applaud creativity, it is used in many cases for means that do not serve you, such as worry, guilt, nostalgia. You use the part of your brain that can create in order to create imaginations that have nothing to do with your current moment. To bring back presence and this ability to override subconscious programming, one must actually be where they are. Not where in time space, but with the experience, observing. The second way is to first adopt the belief that it is possible to easily reprogram subconscious beliefs. This is the first step for this will make the other steps far easier. If one adopts the belief that it is possible to reprogram anything that they do not desire of their behavior or thinking patterns or relational situations, then they automatically have a step in the right direction. The next step is to identify the patterns that are no longer desirable and replace them with the ones that are. And so if you have a pattern that says, I am not a happy person. I am not a naturally happy person and you are unaware of this pattern, you can say, I am happy and do as many affirmations as you would like. But if you do not know that this is actually the underlying story you are telling yourself, it does not matter how many conscious affirmations, visualizations, or beliefs you attempt to apply. If you can see that the underlying belief is I am not a happy person naturally, then what begins to happen is as your subconscious plays that program, you remember the theme tune. And so as soon as you hear that theme tune to that pattern, the one that goes, I am not a happy person, we tried to sing, it did not work. Then you will be able to remember to be conscious in that moment and in that moment, apply the new pattern. In that moment that you are telling yourself, I am not a happy person, you can then tell yourself, I am a happy person. Or more so, I choose to be a happy person. From now on, I am a happy person. For it is very hard to override a subconscious pattern you have been playing for a long time. You can dig for these patterns, but they will present themselves in your day-to-day -day experience. You will know you are running a pattern when anything feels difficult, when anything feels bad, because your feelings are talking to you and telling you what is not actually true. And so if it is not true, it is a pattern that is not serving you. Your brain is capable of making changes to all of your subconscious patterns. 
And so optimizing your brain function will also aid in this endeavor. This includes discovering, researching the food that is helping your brain to function and consuming more of those foods, staying hydrated. and practicing any activity that allows both hemispheres of your brain to work in conjunction. Change in any way and learning is much more facilitated in this manner. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly, you have a question? You can unmute yourself now. Hello. Great to be here. Hello. So my question is, could you speak about the creation process through to through when we have a download of an idea through when it becomes realized into reality. So about that process. What would you like to know about it? There are many directions to take this question in. We do not think you are asking a technical question as to how it works specifically. We are not wanting to impose a direction on the question. And so if you could elaborate on what you are trying to understand we would be glad. Okay. So when we have a download, something that feels really alive and really potent, and it feels like to me that you're not meant to force it or make it happen. And I'm not sure if they are different downloads, different are they anything in themselves or are they just previews of things that could be. And my question is, is there anything that we're meant to do with them? Okay. You were right in intuiting that your downloads are what could be. They are also what is. When you have an inspiration, you are not having an inspiration about the future, but the present. You are tapping into a possibility of the what is in the what is now, because the inspiration itself is the complete realization of it, as all manifestation is thought. So you can begin to think of your inspirations as doors that are opening with invitations for you to pass through the door. And every invitation will lead you to another room. And so with these invitations lining up one after another, perhaps even in different directions, you can begin to feel how these inspirations will lead to different things for yourself or others. And in the same way that you may be invited to a party, you can decide whether you will go or not go to the party. And chances are 
no one will miss you at the party. But if the party seems like a fun place for you to go, then it makes sense for you to go. There is nothing you should do in all of creation. Creation does not ask anything of you. It does not put obligations upon you. It does not think you are better or worse for having taken an invitation or not taken an invitation. There is no level of merit in all of creation, but the invitations are there for you to be able to play the game of deciding. There is no consequence in not following the inspiration, except for the one that you are putting on yourself. We assure you that the moment that you allow yourself to say no to the invitation, you will be invited to nicer parties. For that is another lesson to be learned that there is no end to inspiration. There is nothing that needs to be grabbed or held onto or forced. And that the direction that you least expect, the one that is flowing downstream, is often the most delightful way to go. Many of you in this group, if not all of you, are in touch with so many invitations. And the belief that something needs to be done But there is no party that you can miss that you were not meant to miss because there was something even more wonderful waiting for you. And the fear that you may have about not grabbing hold of these invitations and not acting upon them is only there because you haven't had the right invitation yet. The one that screams to you that you can't even sleep at night. And it will come. You will get so many more invitations. <laughs> Does this answer satisfactory? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Another question, how can one master new skills as quickly as possible? This is similar to the earlier question. And the answer would be the third part of the question on unlearning unwanted patterns in the subconscious. Mastering new skills requires the desire to do so, and it must be a true desire. It does not require necessarily work or struggle or difficulty, but it does require the desire to master that skill. Once that desire is in place, one can 
facilitate this desire and the skill learning by studying, of course, the skill and supporting the brain tissue to learn faster and connecting to one's higher self or to universal consciousness or to isness and requesting with the desire coming from the heart to master that skill. This does not need to be done in any specific way. We can give you several examples of how this can be done. This can be done in meditation where one becomes extremely aware of the skill that they would like to master. This can be done by connecting very deeply with nature as nature will show you that it has all the answers because it has no answers. And it can be done by forming a belief that one is connected to all other consciousness. And so if there is one being on the planet that has mastered a skill, one can tap into the consciousness of that being and simply adopt the skill as well. None of these are harder than the other. The perhaps most difficult part of this is to believe that it is possible. For you have been taught that it is not. Forget what you've been taught and everything becomes much simpler. Thank you. Are there any further Thank questions? Those are all the questions at this time from the group. Wonderful. We would like to thank you for participating and joining us this evening. We are excited about the future development of our relationship with you. And we would like to leave you with the knowing that you are seen, you are a beautiful part of what is happening in the collective that you've chosen. You may not know why you chose to come to this experience. And at times you may even regret having made that choice because in your confusion, you do not see the purity of it. But if you could, and you can, and if you could tap into that moment, that one moment, when you touched into that first cell and said divide, and that one moment before the heart in your chest began to beat and you said beat, if you could remember the love and energy and power you had the moment before you made those decisions and carry that with you even for a fraction of your day. Your questions would immediately be erased. Your fears 
would become laughable and your pain would turn into what it truly is, which is the immense love that you came here with. You are beautiful and powerful and we are in awe. Thank you.